Hi folks, welcome back to the continuing playthrough. We're moving into impulse number seven. This will be the fourth pair of impulses for the May-June turn. First thing we need to do is check for the weather. So let's get that out of the way. Weather roll for impulse seven and eight is a one on the May-June. Uh, it's turning rather nasty out there. This is just what the um, allies were hoping for. As a matter of fact, it probably couldn't have gotten any better for them. It's going to be snow in the Arctic. It's going to be storm in North Temperate, which means France. That's really going to bring the Germans to uh, to a slowing uh, crawl. Mediterranean is rain. We're looking at storm in the other three. So bad weather sets in and might yet uh, keep the allies, or at least France, in the game. Let's go ahead and see what the Germans decide to do with this bad weather. In Asia, the situation is going to be pretty static with the stormy weather everywhere over here. The Japanese have a um, militia corps still at sea here that they're looking to, uh, to debark. However, with the storm, if it goes ashore, it's going to be turned uh, face down. And there's a good chance the uh, Japanese will get one more impulse and they really would like to uh, really would like to try to take this hex again and they're going to need either this militia or the militia at sea here in order to uh, help that attack come off so the japanese are basically content to sit and wait out the uh, weather and hope uh, hope that it dries up and gives them an opportunity to follow up that attack this turn so the japanese um for appearance's sake will uh declare a combined uh, type of action and let's go over to uh, let's go over to Europe All right back in Europe the Italians who may have been contemplating entering the uh, the war are not going to do so uh, with the uh, bad weather everywhere, so they are going to uh, Hold off on any declarations of war, which means they will be doing a uh, a combined impulse seeing as they're still neutral the Germans the Germans thought um, about uh, trying to take advantage of the bad weather at sea to launch uh, their submarines and maybe some surface ships to try to uh, mess with the Commonwealth convoys. However, they just they can't afford to uh, to let up the pressure on France, even even for one impulse and even if it's in this bad weather. Now, because of the storm in North Temperate, the supply range has been reduced to two hexes, which means the uh, the panzers here are actually out of supply uh, because the nearest supply source is uh, the HQ located here, von Lieb, and he is, as you can see, three hexes away. So the French at least don't have to worry about these guys uh, pushing out any further this turn. If they move, they're inverted, and the Germans are definitely not going to uh, going to do that. What will probably happen is the Germans will stick with a land impulse and uh, continue to push their forces forward. They will look at trying to make as many attacks as they can, even though they're a minus two odds uh, because of the weather. Uh, they're going to try and make as many attacks as they can to um, continue to attrit the French forces down because the French will get a... A fair number of uh, reinforcements in this next uh, turn in July, August. So uh, we'll go ahead and take care of the uh, naval moves and the land moves, and we'll come back to see what uh, what the situation in northern France here looks like after the uh, after the German land movement. Over in Asia, the bad weather has completely shut down the theater uh, for this impulse. If the Japanese had some naval units to move, they would have done so, but they've already got all of their transport uh, out at sea, and there's really no reason to sortie any of their combat ships since there's no one with a navy to speak of that they're currently at war with, so that would just burn some oil needlessly. So Asia's and China is shut down. Let's see back in Europe what the Germans were able to do with the bad weather. And it was pretty much very little. The bad weather, the storms in particular, have managed to slow the Germans more than the French and British have so far this turn. As you can see, the front line has not advanced at all. Uh, the Germans are pushing up uh, what they can uh, as far 
forward here. They actually only have one attack this impulse, and it's going to be on this uh, poor anti-aircraft unit that's face down. They're going to attack from actually all four hexes adjacent to it, and that's going to give them 43 attacking what is a two-strength anti-aircraft unit. However, the pink uh, two here is going to double it because they have, uh, the Germans are using a Panzer division, which is gonna make this a four. So a 43 to four is uh, 10 to one odds. The storm is going to reduce that two odds levels, which makes it an eight to one. Because they have the Panzer division attacking, the Germans will select the Blitzkrieg CRT and the eight to one is uh, is an automatic attack. So the, the flak unit will be destroyed and the Germans will be able to advance into the hex. Let's see what they want to move up. I think they're going to want to put... Uh, no, we're going to have to leave that guy there. So they will bring the motorized core, the Panzer Division, and I think they will settle on leaving or advancing in with just those two units. There's going to be very little threat of a counterattack from the French, seeing as the militia hex here is the only hex that will be able to attack because they are all inverted. And with the minus two odd shifts, I think the French would be looking at a one-to-one -one best case with these guys. Yeah, they've got nine attacking seven would be a one-to-one, -one, which would become a one to two, and it would then be an additional minus one on top of that. So uh, safe to say uh, they don't have to worry about any counterattacks. I had thought about moving a core in from here, but uh, you do have the British there that may, would likely probably not attack as well, but we'll just, we'll leave it like this for now with the advance after combat, and we'll see if the allies um, have anything to, to say about that in their next impulse, which, uh, after uh, air rebases and final or reorganization, the Germans, all of the German headquarters are turned face down. Their air transports are turned face down, so they have no reorganization capability left at this turn. They don't have enough offensive points left to turn one of their headquarters face up. So no more reorganization for the Germans from here on out. And um, it is possible looking at the impulse track, if the Germans or the Axis roll a one, they will end the turn. So let's go ahead and see if the turn ends here, which would be of great help to the Allies. We have a seven, so the turn will continue. However, because of the storm, the impulse marker is going to move up two boxes on the track, which puts it in the nine box, meaning the Allies will have a three to end the turn. And now there's some serious consideration that needs to be given by the Allies to per perhaps passing. If all of the Allied powers pass at this point, they would end the turn on a five or less. So they have a 50-50 shot of getting out of the turn right now as things stand. As far as China's concerned, she's really not going to do anything in the in the stormy weather, so she would be content to pass, as would the United States. The Soviet Union uh, would be willing to pass as well because they're not going to be able to do too much with the bad weather as far as repositioning their units. Um, the the it really comes down to uh, to France. Does she risk the 50-50 chance of? Um, blowing the end of roll turn and leaving her units where they are. Um, the Commonwealth would be willing to pass. Perhaps the Allies maybe split the difference and have everyone pass except France, uh, which would still give them a, a minus one to the uh, end of turn die roll. So maybe we'll go ahead and do that. Let's, uh, let's see, the French will kind of look over their options and we'll see what, what the Allies uh, decide to do. After looking over all the options, the Allies have decided that France is going to do a land action and the other Allied powers will all pass. So that'll give them a minus one to the end of turn die roll. And since uh, it's only a land action for France, we have no naval activity 
and uh, there are no air missions because of the bad weather. So we're actually able to move right ahead to the land movement step. And the French are going to slide this stack here in front of the uh, German panzers. If the Germans use any sort of uh, mechanized unit to attack this uh, stack, the 47 millimeter AT guns will actually have a strength of four. Added that to the core below there, it actually has a decent defense value of nine, even though it's only a single core in a division. And that will allow the Paris militia stack to withdraw out of the, out of the pocket there. Uh, they are also going to bring the Bordeaux militia up one. All of these movement costs are doubled. However, they don't have any mechanized units that they're moving, so the forest cost two, um, they're able to move here without uh, without being inverted. I don't see uh, really any other land moves the French want to make. Further south, the Italian border is pretty static. They've basically got a bare minimum garrison here holding these hexes, so they don't want to uh, redeploy any of them further north. They are tantalizingly close to being able to reform a solid front here. It may not be a very thick front, rather thin, but they will, um, if they can get somebody here, or if they can get somebody into this hex here, they'll have, um, they'll have reclosed the gap the Germans have opened. There are no going, there are going to be no uh, invasions, pair drops, or land combat by the French. No air rebases since the entire air force is face down and uh, no reorganization since the only headquarters unit they still have on map is uh, both of them are, are face down here, which brings us to the uh, end of turn test. And as we noted at the beginning of the impulse, they need a three or less to end the turn and they're going to get a minus one to the roll. So a four or less and May, June will come to an end. It is an eight. The turn continues. However, once again, because of the bad weather, the impulse marker is going to jump up two boxes to the 11 box. It is now the axis turn and on a five or less, the axis will end the turn. And if they do, the initiative marker will actually slide into the zero box. So we'll see what, uh, what happens with the weather this next turn. It should be pretty good because of the way the chart is structured. So without any further ado, let's move on and see what the next pair of impulses brings. Now, because the last imp uh, weather roll for the last pair of impulses was a one, we're gonna get a uh, two asterisks, which means we'll, we're going to add two to this weather roll, which means that the Germans are gonna be guaranteed of getting um, fine weather uh, no matter what they roll. If they roll a one, there's still a chance for some bad weather elsewhere, but North Tempered is guaranteed to, be, guaranteed to be good weather for them. And they roll a nine plus two is an 11, which indicates that it is fine weather everywhere. So let's take a look and see what uh, the Axis are gonna do with that. The biggest decision for the Axis right now is do the Italians decide to enter the war or do they hold off and wait a bit longer? Unfortunately, there's not much the Italians can really do um, here along the French border. Their best uh, attack is against the face-down reserve corps here. However, even with the best the Italians could muster from that front, they'd be looking at a one-to-one -one plus one. And uh, those odds, they've got a 50% chance of inflicting zero damage on the French while killing uh, couple of expensive Italian corps in the process. The overall situation really hasn't changed much since the last uh, Axis impulse. So the Italians therefore are going to um, delay yet again. Uh, maybe if the Axis can change the situation considerably here in Europe and they manage to get another impulse this turn, they may decide to come in late in the turn or they may just hold off and perhaps uh, find it better to declare war at the beginning of the July-August turn. So 
with the Italians declining to declare war, the Axis have no other declarations of war at this impulse, and the Italians will be doing a combined. The Germans are going to continue their streak of land impulses as they uh, try to make a real hard push on Paris now. And over in the east, the Japanese will be doing a land as well as they resume their uh, offensive in southeast China. There are no port attacks, no naval air missions. The Italians are not going to uh, make any naval moves either. The Luftwaffe is almost completely expended, so there are no strategic bombing missions. Uh, same for the Japanese. Their air force is largely face down at this point. So we're really up to the rail movement step. And I think the uh, Germans have a couple of rail moves they'll probably do just reorganizing their uh, garrison in the east. And then uh, we'll get into land movement for everyone. As part of their land action, the Germans get three rail moves, and they used their first rail move to redeploy a um, garrison corps from Konigsberg down to uh, Katowice, and they're going to use a second rail move to send this 6-4 infantry corps over to the west front as the front stretches out here in France, and with this giant pocket in eastern France here, there's a lot of frontline hexes that need to be covered, and the Germans are starting to run a little bit thin, so they're going to rail move the um, infantry corps from southwestern Poland here on, on to, who is that? I think that's, uh, yep, von Bock, and they'll send some reinforcements to the west here. Now, the Polish... Partisan value is six. As long as the Germans can maintain a garrison value of at least six, then they won't have to worry about any partisans appearing in Poland and disrupting uh, any of the resource or factory usage over there. Right now, you can see they've got one, two, three, four. They've got five face-up core units there. Uh, since there are no other Axis rail moves will start in on the movement step, and they're going to uh, bring the 5-4 um, Infantry Corps here down into Poland here to satisfy that 6 value, and uh, so they eliminate any possibility of Polish partisans appearing still. Um, Let's see what the Japanese have, and then we'll get back to the Western Front in France. All right, the Japanese still want to press the attack here on 17th Army in the uh, forest where the resource is. The only move they've got is they're bringing up the militia into this hex here, and they're going to plan on launching an attack against this hex again from... Uh, from this hex, as well as using the militia. Uh, we'll see how that works out for them. And now over to France to see how the German attack is developing now that the weather has cleared up. All right, back in France, the Germans have resigned themselves to the fact that they're probably not going to be able to capture Paris this turn. Odds are pretty remote at this point. Uh, they've got no air support they can count on. All of their headquarters are inverted. And while they do still have a powerful army here, it's they've, they've got a lot of work to do before they can bring enough of that force to bear on Paris itself to try to make an attack. So they would like to capture Metz here, which would eliminate a French factory and capture a resource. And since it's a red factory, it would also... Uh, eventually be able to be used by the Germans. However, this stack here, the inverted artillery stack, is the Germans' top priority. Not only is it a hex that's adjacent to Paris, which they will need in order to uh, successfully attack Paris, but it contains an artillery unit and a French headquarters. Both of those are going to make life much more difficult for the Germans if they are on map next turn. So with that in mind, the Germans' impulse this turn is going to be all driven around trying to eliminate this stack. 
To that end, they're going to redeploy some of their most powerful units still on map. The Panzers down south here are actually going to move up into this hex here. The Panzers adjacent to Metz are going to slide in and take their place. They're going to leave the engineers behind for now, and a couple of infantry corps are going to backfill here. And once the engineers are here, we've got a T back where they belong. And then where the Panzer Division is, the Germans are going to take a bit of a calculated risk and they're going to bring in the 6-3 here to help out with the attack. And they're going to leave just a single um, infantry core here with the face down. Actually, they're going to go ahead and bring this AT unit over. That should uh, make that hex a little more defensible. And they'll put the face down artillery back on there with the fighters, just in case the British here in Lille would get any um, adventurous ideas. And back east, they're going to basically shorten up the line a little bit. They're gonna shift their garrison troops around on the Maginot line. They don't really care if they leave this hex open. The French are more than welcome to uh, stick their heads in the noose here. And then hopefully in another impulse or two, the Germans will be able to get enough units um, on the backside of Metz here where they'll be able to make an attack without having to worry about the fortress hex sides over here. Uh, seeing as it's the end of the turn, there's not a lot of movement at the front line, really just some repositioning. That's going to do it for the uh, German and really the Axis land movement step, which is going to bring us up to the air transport, of which there is none. We have no deep arc of land units at sea. There are no invasions or para drops. And we're at the land combat step. The Germans are going to make a single attack this impulse from these three hexes on the inverted division there. And the Japanese in the east are going to make a single attack on the Chinese 17th Army from this stack and the uh, militia unit there. So we will now turn our attention to the land combat and uh, resolve both of these attacks, see how they go. Staying in China, we'll resolve the Japanese attack first. You can see they've got 10 factors in this stack, plus two from the militia unit gives them a total attack of 12 to three defensive factors. That's a four to one on the assault table. And there are no modifiers. So it's just a straight up four to one on the assault. Let's see what the Japanese do with that attack. That's a nine. That's gonna be a good result for the Japanese. They are going to, at 4 to 1, on the assault, a 9 is an asterisk 2S. So the Chinese unit is destroyed. The Japanese suffer no losses, and all of their units remain face up. Now, occupying the hex, what do they want to do as far as moving in? They don't have to worry about any of their units being turned face down because of movement costs. So... They also don't necessarily want to vacate this mountain hex and let the Chinese slip in behind them. Um, we'll send in the militia and, um, and the motorized corps, and we'll leave the Marines here in the mountain. So the Japanese took them a couple of uh, attempts, but they did manage to clear that hex. They've grabbed the resource, however, if you Notice the rail lines here. The Japanese will not be able to use this resource because the rail lines come out uh, into Changsha or into Chang's hex. So they're going to have to, um, in order for the resource to be use, usable by the Japanese, they're going to have to take either this hex or this hex. But they have at least denied the resource to the Chinese, and the Chinese will be uh, will not be able to use it for their production. 
So a very successful attack on the part of the Japanese here, kind of late in the uh, May-June turn. Let's go back to France and see how the Germans fare. Back in France for the German attack, they have 17, 17, and uh, that's 34, 40. They have 47 ground factors, and they are going to commit the 109s here as fighter bombers, making it 48 to 12 defensive factors. They get plus three for three inverted units, and they have more armor than the uh, and mech than the defending uh, French do, so that's going to give them a plus one. That brings it to a total of a 48 to 12, 4 to 1, plus 4, which is a pretty decent attack. Let's see what uh, let's see what the results look like. It's a 3. Not a very good roll for the Germans, but when you add the plus 4 for the modifiers, it gives them a 7 on the blitz. It's going to be an asterisk B result, which is disappointing because the Germans, they take the hex and they don't suffer any losses. So that's the good part. They actually break through, which is fairly important, actually, as we'll see in a moment. However, all three units can retreat. So instead of going into the, uh, into the dead pile and the force pool, these actually will show up next turn as reinforcements for the French. So the French are going to get a lot of reinforcements in uh, in the beginning of July, August, and it's gonna make it that much more difficult on the Germans. However, they do get to break through. And what that means is rather than taking just the single hex on Paris, they'll be able to uh, enter, they'll be able to cross the Seine and get a third hex on Paris. So they're going to take the Panzers from this hex in the east with their motorized flak guns, they will occupy the hex and they will break through and cross the Seine here. And we will bring the other stack here down to occupy that hex. So now, all of a sudden, even though it was a an attack that didn't kill many of the uh, French units, the Germans all of a sudden have two and a half hexes on Paris. Uh, just, I call this a half hex because of the uh, river hex side here. So anybody attacking out of this hex will be halved. Still, it's two and a half hexes. If they can manage to maybe clear this hex, uh, they're gonna be in an excellent position to uh, make a pretty credible attack on Paris, either later this turn, if they're fortunate enough to get another two impulses or uh, early in uh, early in July, August. So kind of a mixed bag for the Germans on that attack. Again, they would have liked to have killed at least one of those French units, preferably two of them. But uh, you take what you get and, um, and you go from there. So with that, there is no um, air rebasing and there's no reorganization to be done, which means we are up to the end of turn test and the Germans will end it, or the Axis will end it, on a roll of five or less. So let's see, the Germans are looking for something a lot higher than a three. They get a five, which is just what was required to end the turn. So now that the turn is over, we'll go ahead and move into the end of turn stage and handle everything from there on out. First thing we need to do for the end of turn stage is partisan step. So let's roll to see if we have any partisans out there. An eight, an eight on the partisan table is going to give us Greece, no, Spain, no, Hungary, no, France, uh, sh probably not. I'll take a look at that. No for Yugoslavia, Portugal, South America. We have NEI and India. That could be a potential issue for the British. Let's go and see what their garrison value looks like over in India. Well, France is not yet conquered, so we don't have to worry about partisans appearing in France. The NEI is not actually controlled by any active major power at the moment, since it is it's still a neutral minor country, which brings us just to India. You can see the Indian partisan value is a five, and they currently have a garrison value of two, which means if they roll a three or less, 
the uh, Indians will see a, or the British will see a partisan counter placed in India. Let's see what the roll does here. It is in fact a three. So we will draw a partisan unit from the partisan cup and then place that in India in as annoying a location as we can come up with. And it looks like the mountains here are an excellent place to really annoy the Commonwealth. So the Commonwealth will go ahead and have to um, dig those guys out of the mountains in order to um, regain use of that resource. So uh, first partisan strike in the game is actually against the Allies rather than the Axis. Now we're moving on to U.S. entry. For U.S. entry, the U.S. currently has three chits in both pools, and they both total seven, which gives them an entry level of 14 against uh, all of the Axis powers. So first thing we need to do is draw a another U.S. chit from the cup. And we get a nice chit. It's a Four. Now we have to decide where to place it. Uh, the U.S., even though we've got um, seven and seven, if that five chip were to come out of the Japanese pool, you could see that would dramatically reduce it down to two from seven. So I think what they're going to do, the U.S. is going to place this four chip in the Japanese pool, which is going to give them a little bit of a uh, little bit of buffer. Uh, in the fact that if, if that five were to disappear, they've still got a healthy entry level there. Now, adjusting the entry levels against the Japanese, they've got 9, 10, 11 times 1.5 is going to give them 16 and a half plus 3 and a half. So they now have an entry level of 20 against Japan, and the 11 becomes 5 and a half plus 10 and a half is um, 16. So we've got 20 against Japanese and 16 against the European axis. As the first U.S. entry option, they're going to choose Gift of Destroyers to the Commonwealth, which has um, an entry hit of seven. And the uh, the Allies will, or the U.S. will choose to adjust that up one to make it... Now we're going to make that adjusted down one to a six. Uh, to see if we have to draw a chit out of the pools. So let's see what the impact of the Gift of Destroyers to Commonwealth has, if any. Oh, that one's actually cocked. Try that again. It is a two, so that is going to cost a chit. The option is aimed, it doesn't have a country specific on it, so either one will do. And the U.S., because they're looking to... Um, also do uh, number seven uh, against the Germans and Italians. So go ahead and take a chit out of the Japanese uh, pool and move it to the tension pool. That also has the effect of increasing the tension against the Japanese. Remember that the U.S., their primary goal right now is to increase, uh, to be able to do option 22, which is going to require an entry level of 22 against all the Axis powers, as well as a tension level of 11 against all the Axis powers. So let's see what moves over to the tension pool. It's going to be the four that was just drawn out. That's going to bring the entry levels for both, uh, for all the Axis powers back down to 14. However, it is going to be a nice bump to the uh, Japanese tension and even a little increase here against the European axis. Remember the goal is 11. So as it stands now, the five becomes a seven and a half plus two and a half is uh, 10, a tension of 10 against the Japanese and the seven and a half plus uh, five, two and a half. So it, they've managed to increase their tension to 10, which puts them really within striking distance of getting to that 11 tension. So they'll just need to work on uh, increasing their focus on increasing their entry levels. Uh, as mentioned, they are going to also occupy Greenland and Iceland, which is aimed against the Germans and Italians. It is a nine, which they will uh, go ahead and use the uh, Edward R. Murrow reporting ability to lower that to an eight. So let's see if this one also moves a chit into 
one of the tension into the German tension pool. It is a five, which it will do. So with that, we'll take another chit out of the German and Italian entry pool. And this one is a one, which is actually just what they need. Probably best case uh, draw for them. Uh, because now he'll have six times one and a half is nine. Plus the two and a half here gives you 11 and a half against the German and Italians, which rounds to 12. And you've got a seven and a half plus three is 10 and a half, which actually rounds to 11. So they've hit their tension mark to be able to play option 22 in a future turn. So from here on out, they just need to uh, get a couple of good chit draws over the next few turns. And it looks like the U.S. will be in good position to gear up. Now that we've handled U.S. entry, we're going to move on to the uh, return to base and the final reorganization. I'll go ahead and kind of take care of all of that, and we'll pick back up again with the production step. Back for production, we'll start with China. China did lose one resource, so they're down to six resources currently. They still have seven factories, which will give them six production points. With a production multiple of 0.75, though, it uh, gives them 4.5 build points, which rounds to five build points. So it did not affect their production this term, but if they lose another resource, it will definitely start to have an impact on them. The uh, only infantry corps left in the cups for the Chinese right now are all Chinese communists. And the biggest threat right now is in the south to the nationalist armies. So the Chinese, who already have a couple pilots, are going to build another aircraft, another fighter, for two, they're going to build a nationalist uh, cavalry division uh, for one, and they're going to build a motorized infantry division uh, for another two. So that gives them a total of five production. Uh, next up, we'll move on to the Soviets. The Soviet Union has 13 build points, and they are going to build the last of their armor corps for six. They'll build a motorized infantry corps and just a regular infantry corps, giving them 13. Uh, next up, we'll uh, take a look and see what the United States is going to build. The United States has 10 build points, and they are still focusing on their naval builds. They've got all their carriers and battleships out of the force pool, so they're at least into their first cycle. And uh, they're going to start to uh, build some... Uh, transports now since uh, they can't beat the Germans without getting some troops into Europe and they're going to need transports to do that. So the Amphib, uh, they're building one of those for three. They're building a transport for another two. Then they're going to start working on the Merchant Marine with some convoy points. They're building two convoy points and they're also going to build one tanker point. And then finally, with their last two, they are going to build a couple of uh, carrier air groups, some CVPs. That'll bring them to 10, and we'll move on to France. Now, French production has been affected by the German advances into uh, France. The Germans have actually seized two resources, but they've also isolated the three factory stacks in Lille, so those will be unavailable for French production because they can't get any resources to it. That's going to end up giving the French uh, eight production points altogether, uh, which with their 0.75 production multiple gives them six build points. Situation is pretty dire in France and the French need as much stuff as they can get right now because uh, they may not be around in three or four turns. So with that in mind, they are going to spend two points to build a militia unit, which will arrive next turn and they will start uh, building or continue to build some aircraft with two more fighter units, hoping to be able to get through July, August and um, be able to at least maintain their strength in the air, if not uh, be able to increase it because they, they do also have a, uh, lack of pilots, which is kind of limiting them. So the last allied production is going to be the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth production actually is impacted by those partisans over in India by reducing the, uh, by denying the use of that resource. It's going to lower their production to 16 this turn. 
However, they will take advantage of the gift of destroyers the U.S. gave them, and they're going to finish the Anson, which would normally be three, but um, uh, it's got a second cycle cost of three, reduced by one thanks to the uh, U.S. destroyers. So that's two. They will build another transport. They will build a convoy point as well as a, um, a cruiser, one pilot. They're going to build two aircraft. Both of them are naval air in anticipation of um, the Italians entering the war at some point. And they'll finish it off with a territorial. That will do it for Allied production. Let's take a look at the Axis. Now, when I did the Allied builds, I had forgotten about the cadre rule, which provides one extra bonus build point for every core-sized unit destroyed in your home country or that is destroyed adjacent to an HQ. So you can see here in the cadre pool, from the May-June turn, the uh, losses for both the, the French, uh, the Chinese, and the Japanese. The Chinese have one bonus build point, which would have bumped their production up to six build points. So rather than building the uh, fighter, the motorized division, and a cavalry division, they're going to uh, substitute out that cavalry division and instead build a pilot for a total of six build points. The French are going to end up with four extra build points. The divisions, they do not provide the extra build point. And what that's going to translate into is um, an additional reserve unit for the uh, for the French, since that'll come back next turn, as well as a pilot. So that should adjust the Allied production. And now we can move on to the Axis production with the Italians up next. All right, the Italians have eight resources going to 11 factories, which is going to give them eight production points with a 0.75 production multiple, ends up with six build points for the Italians. However, they are lending one of those build points to the United States, so they have five available for production. And with those five, it's it's a kind of a paltry number for um, uh, a country that's going to play as pivotal, as pivotal a role in, uh, in the game as Italy. They're going to focus on uh, their strengths, their Air Force and their Navy. They will spend three build points for the second cycle of Impero, uh, one of a rather nice uh, battleship, and they will build uh, another pilot uh, to continue to expand the Regia Aeronautica. Now, on to the Japanese. Uh, the Japanese have 14 build points plus one bonus build point from the cadre rule for the infantry corps that was destroyed, stacked with Yamamoto this turn. So with the 15 build points, they are still anticipating not being at war with another major power for, well, at least a year, uh, maybe a year and a half. So they're going to focus on their uh, naval construction still. And with that in mind, they are going to spend two to replace the militia that uh, was just destroyed last turn. Uh, they will spend another two points to train some more pilots. They're going to build three carrier uh, planes, three CVPs, as well as a um, one point on a transport. Uh, I'm sorry, not a transport, a convoy point. They're also going to build an uh, amphibious transport on the first cycle. They're going to spend a point to uh, build some oil tankers, anticipating getting their hands on some of the uh, oil in Southeast Asia. And then they're going to spend their final three points to do the first cycle of one of their light carriers. And then they're going to finish up Shokaku and get her on the spiral to arrive next summer. That'll bring them to 15, and the uh, last major power remaining is Germany. Let's take a look and see what she's going to build this turn. Germany has 25 factories and an excess of resources. Uh, she captured two resources in France this turn, however, and they are able to uh, be transported back to Germany. However, because she did not control them at the beginning of the turn, uh, she's unable to use them for production this turn. She'll have to wait till July, August uh, to to be able to use those. Regardless, it gives her uh, 25 production points and she's able to save four oil 
which will come in handy um, as she continues her drive to uh, knock France out of the war. With the 25 production points, her 0.75 production multiple leaves her with 19 build points, two of which are being sent to the Soviet Union, so she nets 17 for the turn. She's going to spend uh, six of them on an armor core and three more on an infantry core. She's going to train two pilots. Actually, the armor goes there. She'll build one twin engine land bomber. And then finally, she's going to spend her last point to pull a U-boat um, out of the construction pool. Have that arrive in three turns, just in time for the bad weather in the winter to maybe go out and cause the Commonwealth some headaches among her uh, convoy pipelines. That's going to wrap up production for the May-June 1940 turn. Moving on to the peace step, there is no conquest, there's no allied minor support or mutual peace. Vichy declaration is not possible because the Germans have not yet uh, occupied Paris. There's no liberation or surrender. That's going to bring us to the end of a very eventful May-June 1940 turn. You can see the Germans have unleashed their big attack into uh, France. They've managed to advance quite a ways uh, despite some less than optimal play and uh, perhaps a mistake or two along the way, they've still managed to get three hexes adjacent to Paris, which is probably the bare minimum that you need to really be able to mount a uh, an attack that has a reasonable chance of success. It'll be interesting to see if the French, who are scheduled to get quite a number of reinforcements in the upcoming reinforcement phase, if the French are able to um, somehow drag it out and survive the July-August turn. Um, that right now, the Allies are just praying that's going to be the case, and they can keep the Germans bogged down in France until the bad weather this fall sets in. If that's the case, um, Germany is going to be way behind schedule, and uh, the Allies may have a chance to um, to uh, to take out the Axis a lot sooner than would otherwise be the case. But it's all going to depend on whether or not uh, the French can uh, hold off the Germans here. The Germans still um, have a large advantage in the air, but most of their air power is back here. It's going to take them uh, at least an impulse or, or two to uh, move that into position. So we'll see how things play out in July, August. We appreciate you watching, and we'll try to, uh, try to get July, August... Uh, through that and get that uploaded here a little quicker than we uh, than we did with this May June turn. It's sure to be just as eventful as we've seen here. So stay tuned and thanks again for watching. See you next time.